You know, I think one of the things I'm curious at, who do you guys kind of get excited when you get a text from? Is there somebody that calls that you look forward to, you don't get to hear from very often? You're like, I can't wait to take this call. Gosh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, well, I got to tell you guys, you made my job really hard. I've interviewed Bill Murray, Mike Pence, Ouch. Jason Aldean, and I usually get about a half a page of accomplishments. And when I got yours, it was like five pages long. Well, I mean, most of them come from this guy here. Well, let's be honest. Uh, don't you. be so mm-hmm. modest. I mean, Catherine, American Idol, uh, the, obviously the sitcoms, the new yeah. jewelry, David. I'm not going to go through all the bands because I only have like a 30 minute show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'd take us hours. But, you know, I think one of the things I'm curious at, who do you guys kind of get excited when you get a text from? Is there somebody that calls that you look forward to, you don't get to hear from very often? You're like, I can't wait to take this call. Gosh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I always love talking to Stevie Wonder. I, I know that's a name drop, sorry, yeah. but he is a friend. But he'll go months. I'll text him. And I hear nothing crickets, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, yeah, hey, David, hey, Steve, <laughs> what's up? And I love that. It's just like you know, Stevie Wonder. Yes. I mean, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, I only know Michael Bublé because of you, but he sent me a really nice text. A he couple- did, huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> um, just about something like a personal thing. It was very sweet. I just think it's so nice. I mean, I've been such a fan of his that. Um, also the fact that Barbara Streisand was so excited about the birth of our son and we had many, many conversations with Barbara Streisand over the phone. And I, in fact, I think I, like, I think I actually took a picture of you talking to her one time, (laughs) like just so that I could have memory of you. And she was talking about the gift that she sent our son Mm -hmm. Rennie, um, before he was born or after he was born. So that was kind of cool. There's the name dropping out of the way. There you go. Name drop. Hey, do our, our listeners love it. Name drop away. David, you know, you know, to create something is very hard. And, you know, I think people are very interested in the creation of a song. Do you have a process or do you go to a dark room, a cave or, or some special location where you work with someone or you have to hear the music? I'm, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. You know, I don't know what the norm is, but I, I don't think I'm the norm. I don't get inspired in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. I don't wake up in the middle of the night with, a, with a, an idea. That's um, kind of not true. It is kind of No, true. because <laughs> I've been with you plenty of times where very, very rarely, like I'll been with you. Well, I've been with you for a long time, but you'll get up in the middle of the night and you'll start to play something in the piano because you can't get something out of your head. Yeah. It's never any good though. I mean, those <laughs> things are never any good. It's, it's, it's work. Yeah. I mean, I, okay. Today I'm going to write a song cause I, we, you know, the Broadway show I'm doing needs a song or somebody needs, you know, you go to the piano and you just try and create it's, it's work. It's a job. It's so impressive. Now, you know, we are a, a finance show, so it's always fun to ask <clears throat> if you don't mind sharing maybe either of you, the best finance or the worst finance advice you've ever gotten from a friend or maybe even an advisor? Well, I know that I had Facebook uh, shares when they came out. I got, you know, a special privilege to get them. And I panicked. I think it came out at 28, oh, is, dropped to 24 the same day, and I sold. He is the worst. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's He's, bad. That was my he, own bad advice. That's a fantastic story. He, yeah, I mean, listen, you've done very, very well, but you are a classic, like, panicker when it comes to mm. stocks and things like that. I mean, even the pandemic, you got crazy and started pulling money out. Um, I don't now I don't have as much money as you. So maybe that's the <laughs> difference. But I um, the best advice, honestly, I feel like I have been my own best advisor. I mean, I, I love to be a consumer. I love to shop and spend and things like that. But I've done a good job of living within my means, maybe some years better than the others, but also just buying property. Yep. Um, I real estate, own, they're, not real estate. Anymore, they're not making any more of it. Are they? Real estate yeah. seems to be the best bet own, for me anyway. I own two houses that I, um, that I rent out yeah. and we just got a house together that we're like been building and, and I'm like in, encouraging him to like, let's do another one. Like let's, <laughs> well, I don't fun, know right? what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm going to be the reason he loses mm-hmm. all his money, but I hope not. But I really think real estate is like just the most I think it's very safe. What's your, what's your advice to us, Greg? Well, for retirees, a lot of people are done working. We want to make sure for our demographic that they, you know, keep what they have. You know, yeah. at this time, don't take any big risks. Enjoy what your retirement. You know, you're done working. Sometimes people get to retirement. It feels like they have to keep working to make their money work for them or do extra right. things. And sometimes that's not the case. You just kind of have to sit back, relax, and kind of sometimes take on more conservative investments. Mm. Which My are- mentality sort of is like... I want, I want to keep working because I don't want to touch what I've saved. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if that's valid or not. Well, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and she has a question for you because we were oh, doing cute. our research together. And you were very humble when you said, you know, you know, 80s and 90s was my time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's someone else's time. But I think my daughter would disagree. So we cooked together, and she listens to Nina Simone and oh, 70s cool. Rock. Oh. And we're sitting there, and she goes, Dad, 
why don't they make music like this anymore? And I oh. was curious what the reaction is. I know it's different now and things are different, but mm. you know, if you had to have that softball question, how would you respond to my 10 year old? Well, I, I, I think she's uh, an oddity. I, I'm not an oddity, but I think she's rare. Yeah. Who was that artist that you were saying recently that if you had got to work together, you oh, would... Oh, well, The weekend. I mean, yep. he's straight. He's like ripping from the 80s yeah, in the best else. way. Um, I think that um, I would just say to her, thank you for listening and thank you for, uh, you know, upholding uh, what we think was the, the golden age of recording. But again, the people that are in it today doing well, don't think they think they're in the golden age. But um, it was a great time. It was a great, great time for music. We're almost out of time, but I have to ask one more question. What was the most fun you had? Like, you know, there's a, was there ever a, you know, when you were producing or writing or even performing, was there ever someone out there, a star that someone, either of you, you know, that you work with and you're like, this is too much fun. This doesn't even feel like yes. work. Yes, please tell us about all the fun you had when I was not around. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you know, um, Kat mentioned Barbara and she is so iconic, Barbara Streisand. Did you guys um, get into fights with each other? Yes, we did. But, but good fights, you know, good, uh, healthy fights. Um, one time, really quickly, one time she was complaining about the chairs in my studio because they were all ratted on the engine. She says, these chairs are filthy. How do you expect me to sit in these chairs? And she was right. They were filthy. They had been there for years. And I said, well, Barbara, if you, if you don't like them, buy me some new ones. The next day, four new chairs. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you, Barbara. Well, we are out of time today. Um, Catherine. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for obviously entertaining and providing just endless enjoyment across America. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. thanks thank you. Thank you.